In the beginning, fierce warriors wielded simple weapons. Time passed, and joystick conquerors came of age. With the advent of modern controllers, digital warlords perfected their art. Today at GameTap.com, mere mortals become virtual heroes. Prepare to take challenges, not prisoners. Take your battles online now, only at GameTap.com. Hey, how's it going and welcome to another 5th 30k week video. So today I wanted to talk about a topic that's been, like, it's been something I've wanted to talk about for quite a while now. And that is, of course, the now long-deceased GameTap. So for those of you who've never heard of it, GameTap was, like, I guess the easiest way to describe it is it was kind of like a Netflix for video games. You'd pay a fee every month and you'd have access to, like, a pretty substantial library of games. I'll talk about some of the ones that, like, stood out in a bit, but it was a service that, it, like, surprisingly ended up being super influential for my gaming career, and it really opened my eyes up to a lot of different just kinds of games. So I'm sure if you're a 90s or early 2000s babby like me, you will remember some of these game tap commercials. I played an example of one at the beginning, but the, they were really quite uh, entrancing commercials. Since at the time, there really wasn't anything like it. Like when you were a kid, you get a new game every, uh, every now and again. I don't know, it depended on how rich your family was, I guess. So the concept of having access to hundreds of games was like really appealing to a kid. And eventually, after asking my mom a couple of times, she caved in and got me a subscription to it. And I was like, hell yeah, baby. And it really was a pretty nice library of games. It had a really diverse selection of like a lot of arcade classics. It had like a couple Dreamcast games. I remember it being one of the, like really one of the first PC gaming experiences I ever had. And when you're a kid, uh, I think I got it around 2006, so I must have been, I was about 10 years old. And when you're a kid that age, you really don't know, like, anything about emulation. Or at least I sure as hell didn't. So the idea that, like, there, there was an easier way to play, like, a lot of these games and not have to get my mom to pay money for it was, like, a really foreign idea. But no, there was a lot of stuff on Access there. Um, I remember Deus Ex being, like, that was the first time I played Deus Ex was on GameTap. It's a weird story I'm just remembering as I'm, like, describing this, but I remember at one point I had a babysitter. I'm pretty positive this was the same babysitter that introduced me to Resident Evil 4. Like, at one point I had this babysitter who brought over her PS2 and a copy of Resident Evil 4. It was a really cool, like, babysitting activity, but... No, I remember playing Deus Ex, her watching me. I had basically no idea what I was doing. I know I at least got past Liberty Island when you stopped the terrorist guy who, you know, hijacked the Ambrosia shipment. But everything past that, I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And a recurring theme with a lot of these is that I would eventually play them on Steam and finish them. Once I was a little bit older and slightly, slightly less stupid. Pretty much every classic Sonic game was on there, which was pretty cool. I also had the Sonic Mega Collection on the GameCube, so like, I already had all those games, but, you know, it was another way to play them. I have a dirty confession, I've never finished a classic Sonic game. I don't know, something about, like, the design of those games just doesn't work with my brain. I'm very bad at platformers in general, and, I don't know, it's the kind of thing where I know if I sat down and was like, I am going to finish this classic Sonic game, I'd be able to, but it's just, it's never happened. They had quite a few of the Metal Slug games, that was my first experience playing a lot of those. And there was a lot of arcade games on there, like they had most of the classics, they had uh, Space Invaders, I believe they had Pac-Man? Pac-Man, Centipede, they had a lot of the, you know, the classic arcade games. Here's a sad, lonely feather story, but I remember one time, like, organizing a classic arcade night with my family. I made all these little flyers with, like, drawings of Pac-Man and, like, centipede on it and i was like handing them out and i was all oh come to the classic arcade night at in nick's room and i think eventually they came in and played like a game and returned to their business and i was just like you too sid meyer's pirates was a game that i played and that's a game that i don't think i've ever really talked about but it is really like special to me in a way i remember playing a metric 
fuck ton of that game, dude. And of course, there was Civilization 4. I played a lot of Civ 4 on GameTap. It was also my first experience playing a lot of the Street Fighter games. Crazy Taxi, just like a ton of games that I look back and I think, oh man, that game is rad. I played on GameTap first. And it wasn't all peaches, sunshine, and roses because the laptop that I would play it on was my mom's. It was a Windows Vista machine. And that thing fucking sucked. Um, it could like pretty much anything from before about 2005-ish was fine. But there are some games that just would not work. Like the one that uh, most sticks in my head of it being a game that I really wanted to play but just couldn't get working was uh, Warhammer 40k Dawn of War. That game lagged so bad on that computer. So anything that was even semi-modern around the time, I just couldn't get working. I had to stick to some of the older games. And for a good while, the games on GameTap were basically my only real access to, like, PC gaming. I didn't make a Steam account until, uh, maybe 2009 or 2010. And so for a solid few years, that was pretty much it. If I wanted to play a game on the computer, it was pretty much through GameTap. But all good things must come to an end eventually. And for me, the end was my mom complaining about getting charged every month for it. And it was actually fairly expensive. Um, I've been seeing conflicting reports about how much it actually costs. It was somewhere in between $9.99 and $19.99 a month. The system went through a couple of revisions of like different tiers of subscription model that you could put yourself onto. So I don't know exactly how much it was per month, but either way, like between 10 and 20 bucks a month, that's a lot. Around 2008 was finally the time when I was kind of like, I had my Wii, I believe I had a PS3 at the time, or that might've been more like 2009, but either way I thought, oh, I don't really play game tap that much. And so I canceled my subscription. And within two years of that, GameTap was gone. And like most things, I think it really was just kind of the changing of the times that killed them. You know, more people got smart to the idea of emulation, so suddenly the idea of, whoa, check it out, dude, you could play Sonic, or whatever it may be, just didn't have that same appeal anymore, because you could get it for, 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 for free. Steam was also taking over the planet, so it was like, why spend $19 a month on GameTap when I can just buy what I actually want on Steam for barely anything when the shit goes on sale? And this was also around when, you know, Virtual Console and like the PlayStation Store, Xbox Live were taking off. So if you wanted to play some of these older games, like it's, it's right there to download. You can just go buy it. So from a combination of just, you know, Virtual Consoles, Emulation, Steam, People's parents saying, get this fucking game tap shit off my credit card. And general disinterest in the service kind of like, that's what killed it at the end of the day. It really stopped getting new games after a while. And I think it actually started to lose games as it went on because licenses with different companies started to run out. And by 2010, it was like, it was just done. But the spirit of game tap, I feel definitely has lived on. The idea of pay money every month and receive game, like, really started to pick back up around, you know, stuff like uh, PlayStation Plus and Xbox Game Pass. So the idea has definitely continued on, but there, there will never be another game tap. And I had no idea at the time, but game tap ended up being super influential for my, my gamer development. Because that was my first introduction to a lot. Obviously, at some point, I would have gotten around to playing, you know, Deus Ex, uh, Metal Slug, Crazy Taxi, but it's it's that first time, I think, that's the most important. And my first time just happened to be through GameTap. But yeah, that's been the video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you happen to be a boomer like me who has memories of this service, definitely leave them down in the comments. I'd like to reminisce with the, uh, the GameTap crowd. Bring back GameTap. Bring back GameTap. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time.